tucked away in the bustling village of Bonacord is Audrey's Garden Center and Nature Park, a place where visitors can experience Tobago's natural charms and much of the island's indigenous wildlife. Stay with us for a sneak peek of what this tranquil oasis has to offer. We have a really exciting show for you this week, including highlights from the Prime Minister's meeting with the business sector. I'm Davia Chambers, and Let's Talk Tobago starts now. In the headlines, the Tobago Business Chamber is optimistic on the economy after meeting with the Prime Minister and the Tobago House of Assembly. The reshaping of the construction industry has begun with the certification of skilled labor and later we take you to the annual National Union of Government and Federated Workers Awards. These stories and more when Let's Talk Tobago continues. Stay with us. Entrepreneur Clive George opened the doors to Audrey's Garden Center and a Nature Park in 2012. It was the realization of a long-standing dream for the entrepreneur. He chose this name to honor his late mother, Audrey George. In our top story, Prime Minister Dr. Keith Rowley visited Tobago to meet with the business sector. Now they discussed some of the island's most pressing issues in order to chart a way forward. Caroline Wallace explains. It was described by the Prime Minister, Dr. Keith Rowley, as a problem-solving session. Issues relating to agriculture, tourism, as well as safety and security were all discussed in an open forum among the Prime Minister, members of Cabinet, the Tobago House of Assembly, and the Tobago Division of the Chamber of Industry and Commerce, along with other business associations on the island. There were some other issues raised, for example, there was the issue of the land license, which is a permanent bugbear in Tobago, as to how, who can own land and the transfer and the process and so on. And I think um, like that, we've taken that on board. The cabinet will look at that and we'll make some decisions on that to see if we can alleviate the aggravation there. The topic of the proposed Sandals Resort for the island was also raised. The Prime Minister says the project is moving ahead. We are accelerating the gestation period. As I said earlier on the day, such a big project doesn't arrive overnight. There's a lot of preparations and agreements to be had, and that's the phase that we are in. We have a memorandum of understanding signed between the government of Trinidad and Tobago and Sandals, and that is where the project starts and then we go on now to determining the very nature of it and get to the physicals. We have identified the land, we have, the land has been surveyed, most of it, that, that, that topographical survey goes to the ar architects. We are, in the coming weeks, going to be putting in, beginning to put in applications for the approvals and the consultation process will begin. The challenges with the sea bridge are also a big concern for Tobagonians, but residents are being assured that soon, Passenger ferry woes will be a thing of the past. The spirit, which has been on dry dock for quite some time, is expected to be doing sea trials next month. And hopefully, if the sea trials go well, it's back into service. So that would plug a big hole there. The express then goes on to dry dock. And we don't expect that dry docking to be as extensive as the spirit. And that comes back into service. That's two. We've just um, committed to buy a third ferry which is a little smaller, 700 as compared to 900 passengers, 100 cars as compared to 160 or 180, something like that. But when we, we'll, be, we'll be owning those three vessels. There are also moves to improve air transport by more efficient use of the service and better scheduling, as Caribbean Airlines continues to meet with the Assembly. Chairman of the Tobago Chamber of Commerce, Dami John Cruikshank, says he's satisfied with the outcome of the meeting. So too is Chief Secretary Kelvin Charles. There were a number of issues raised by the business community and I think whilst we may not have um, agreed um, in respect of definitive decisions in some instances, we have all agreed on some and we have decided that there will be a resolution going forward because we have decided to do our own research as well as to engage 
the relevant parties to bring resolution to some of the long-standing issues. So and I think the private sector is a lot clearer in terms of what the government's plans is for Tobago. And I hope that uh, in a very short space of time, we can see the economy of Tobago uh, on the path of, of growth. The meeting was held at the Magdalena Grand Beach and Golf Resort. I am Caroline Wallace for Let's Talk Tobago. Mr. George returned to Tobago in 2001. In an effort to take care of his ailing mother and aunt, he decided to use the property to plant crops to sell at the market. And speaking of sales, the island is exploring the potential of the construction sector and the Studley Park Quarry is one crucial area that can help boost the economy. We have more details from Crystal George. Studley Park Enterprise Limited Tobago is going through a transformation. The aim is to turn Tobago's only quarry into an enterprise that's profitable and will meet the demand of construction aggregates on the island. And with renewed focus on strengthening the island's construction sector, the timing is perfect. The quarry currently produces various types of aggregates, which gives it significant potential. Basically, at this quarry, what we deal in is hard rock. The material is basically and the site hard rock. And in order to acquire the raw material to feed the plant, what is done, we actually have to blast the material to reduce the size. And on blasting, it is transported to the to the crushing plant where it is crushed, it goes through a, a certain process and generates the different range of aggregate product that are required. The Studley Park general manager believes once the quarry's current level of production is maintained, it can contribute to the economy. I always look at the Studley Park Enterprise Limited quarry as a jewel in Tobago. Because I am, as the general manager, I am looking at this quarry as being an entity, uh, the entity that will be one of the greatest revenue or income generator for, the, for Tobago. A big part of its success will hinge on the quarry's ability to meet the demands of aggregate. Sometimes this means putting in an extra shift at the facility. The local customer is first and I will stress that. And how we go about fulfilling this is that we produce daily, basically Monday to Friday. And if the needs be, we will produce over the weekend in order to have material available. This material that is available, we will definitely give to the local customers, the local clients first. After, they are, after that after that supplier, that market is fulfilled, then we can look at others, fulfilling the marketing needs or desires of others. Stanley Park's motto is performance, productivity and the profit for the island. I'm Crystal George for Let's Talk Tobago. The Permaculture Garden and the Medical Garden are two of the main attractions at Audrey's Garden Centre. It's a must-see for visitors interested in organic produce and medicinal herbs. From the herb garden to a health facility that's making the best possible use of the body's natural healing process. It's impressed patients who say the treatment is improving their lives. They spoke with Omodara Mills who filed this story. Rosamond Anthony isn't coming out of a spaceship or submarine. She's just finished a 90-minute oxygen therapy session in a hyperbaric chamber. At this medical facility in Roxborough, patients like Rosamond breathe in pure oxygen through a mask in a pressurized chamber. This helps speed up the body's natural healing process for conditions such as wounds that won't heal quickly enough. Miss Anthony is diabetic. In September last year, she got a cut on her left foot and an abscess was formed. The sore was treated and she was then referred to the hyperbaric medical facility for 20 oxygen therapy sessions. She's passed the halfway mark and is already seeing positive results. I benefit a lot from it. I haven't reached 20 years yet and the foot is on its way to progress. Right? I was walking with a cane. I no longer use the cane. So to me that is 
great. Since the facility was recommissioned just over two years ago, more than 40 participants received oxygen therapy treatments, mainly for slow healing wounds. People have also received treatment for gas gangrene and decompression sickness, known as the BENS. Now, Mrs. Arlene White was referred to the facility for 15 sessions. She has one session left. My vision, the blurriness, I started to see the difference. Car, the number plate, could have made out the five, the eight, the nine. And um, with that in walking, I started to feel more energized. Biology teacher Jamila Amin Bacchus was a patient at the hyperbaric chamber. She received 20 treatment sessions for damage to her lower leg. She started experiencing positive changes after her first two treatments. Now, Ms. Bacchus is a vocal advocate for this service. I literally just submitted myself to the treatment and I found I got marvelous res results. I would recommend it to persons, especially persons who have trauma to their legs, who have compromised vascular systems. You don't have to cut off your legs with this treatment. It can repair legs that have been deteriorated very, very far. The Tobago Regional Health Authority, the TRHA, is the entity responsible for the hyperbaric medical facility. The service is free and is the only one available in the public health care system. Anyone seeking more information on the facility and its services can call 660-4000 or 493-4973. I'm Amadara Mills for Let's Talk Tobago. We have to take a break, but coming up next, you'll find out about efforts to certify the island's skilled construction workers. This and more when Let's Talk Tobago returns. Welcome back. You are viewing Let's Talk Tobago. Now, Audrey's Garden Center and Nature Park is open for business from Monday to Saturday, 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. Adults pay just $15 to explore the property and the children $5. One training program is expected to boost the construction sector by offering skilled workers the chance to become certified. But if you don't have the experience, it's also a great way to get started. Omodara Mills tells us more. Miguel Wilson is a 30-year-old entrepreneur. He specializes in agribusiness as well as the creation of small home furnishings. Although he doesn't have formal carpentry training, he is willing to become certified through the Construction Certification Training Program. The initiative was launched recently by the Division of Education, Innovation and Energy. So I'm all about learning and increasing knowledge and improving myself thereby. And um, when I heard about the course in carpentry, I could not let it pass. So I'm here and I expect to get from this program that at the end of it, I should be able to build a complete home. Build my own beds, build my own cupboards, build the house from beginning to end. I should be able to do that at the end of this program. That's what I expect. The Vocational Skills Training Program caters to residents ages 17 to 60 years old. It's the result of collaboration among the THA, Roxborough's Trade School, and the National Examination Council. It will ensure the island has more certified tradesmen and women in masonry, electrical installation, carpentry, and plumbing. Now when you leave here, whether it's in three months, six months, or nine months, you would leave with a certificate that somebody who is looking for somebody to hire you could present something of substance and not just in terms of the paper but what you would have developed and your ability to do the work. The program will be hands-on with continuous assessments for participants. People who are skilled but not certified can complete certification in three months. Semi-skilled participants will have a six-month program and those new to their chosen trade will be certified in a nine-month period. 32-year-old Wayne John is new to plumbing, 
but he's willing to learn all that he can. Well, I really wanted to expand my, um, you know, skill set. Uh, plumbing is something that I have never delved into before, uh, but I would have seen firsthand uh, the benefits of, uh, you know, knowing such a skill. More than 20 people have registered for this construction training program. Once they complete the course, they will be certified, competent, and marketable citizens. I'm Amadara Mills for Let's Talk Tobago. For the nature lovers out there, there are at least 14 different species of animals at Audrey's Nature Park. There are also numerous plant and fruit tree varieties that add to the outdoors experience. Now this, the Division of Sports and Youth Affairs recently hosted a multi-sport coaching workshop to enhance the technical knowledge of the island's coaches, with all the highlights in this next report. A key part of preparing athletes for international competition is ensuring that they have the right technical support. And several of Tobago's coaches and sport development officers had the opportunity to sharpen their skills at a multi-sport development workshop. The session, which was hosted by the Division of Sport and Youth Affairs, touched on coaching methods and motor skills for all sports. This workshop was on multi-sport activities, which included sport for all. It dealt mainly with agility, balance, movement, and a very important part, which is decision-making. The one-day session created an environment for coaches to work together, paving the way for a new approach to training to Bigo's young athletes. You know, in uh, various activities, each at athlete will train separately for their respective disciplines, but with this multi-sport activity, all athletes can train together and still move on to their respective disciplines. The workshop featured theory, as well as the practical application of multi-sport principles. Certified coach educator Jim Kelman offered this word of advice to the attendees. An experience is looking at other people's work, looking at what's good, looking at how you can change that, take it on board, and then uh, mentor other people. So we're all teachers, coaches are all teachers, tutors, and we will all be responsible for young children's um, learning in terms of their sporting activity. And if they learn it young, they'll keep it for life. The workshop was hosted at the Shaw Park Hard Court. I'm Kuhn De Freitas for Let's Talk Tobago. Audrey's Garden Centre and Nature Park occupy 60,000 square feet of land. In the near future, Mr George plans to open a vegetable market on the property, which means opening hours will be extended. The Lions Club District Governor was in Tobago recently for a zone meeting and during a courtesy visit at the office of the Chief Secretary, he shared some insight on their projects on the island. More from Kundi Freitas. Social development must be collaborative to be effective. It takes communities, state entities and non-governmental organizations like the Lions Club to empower communities and inspire service. Tobago is one of the Caribbean islands that benefits from Lions Club supports. And the club's district governor, who oversees Trinidad and Tobago, Guyana and Suriname, paid a visit to the office of the chief secretary. He met with Secretary of Community Development, Enterprise Development and Labour, Marcelin Melville-Jack, ahead of the club's zone meeting. That's the meeting of eight clubs where we share a little bit of what we had experienced over the past year, well, in this case half year, because <laughs> we usually have two. And um, this is sort of a stepping stone for us, where we submit our final reports to our governors, so they can now present to their cabinets and uh, international by extension. The club trains its members to be global leaders in the community and in humanitarian service. Our members are volunteers who go and find out the needs, the greatest needs in communities, and we support those needs. So whether it might be for literacy, uh, diabetes, hearing, sight, other uh, health care issues, uh, we are there as lions. We've been well known for sight over the years, and having celebrated 100 years uh, last year, we're now looking to improve the extent of our service. We have branded pediatric care and diabetes as our new signature activities. 
Over the years, the Lion Club District participated in many projects, including distribution of hampers to people in need, helping fire victims, and more. In Tobago, the members intend to take it one step further by providing a play park to the communities on the Tobago North Coast. Now, um, within recent times, we have conducted um, continuous um, community needs assessment. And on that basis, we are um, assisting directly now certain villages. For this year, we, are, we have targeted or we did our community needs assessment with the villages of, of um, Black Rock, um, sorry, Bloody Bay and Palatouve. And we, at Christmas time, we took chairs to them. We are in the process of giving them a, a play park and on our uh, program of, of activities in March month, we are going to conduct some ice screening exercises with that village. The Lions Club members also participated in a hearing impaired awareness and action project with district associates during the visit. I'm Kuhn De Freitas for Let's Talk to Beagle. We have to take a break, but when we return, the National Union of Government and Federated Workers hosts its 10th annual awards and appreciation function. Let's Talk to Bago will be right back. Stay with us. Thank you for staying with us. Now we are exploring Audrey's Garden Center and Nature Park. Apart from Audrey's Garden Center, there's lots to see when visiting Tobago. There's the Tobago Main Ridge, the oldest protected forest reserve in the Western Hemisphere, many waterfalls, and Little Tobago, a paradise for bird watchers. So it's always good to be appreciated. That's what one national trade union showed in hosting its 10th annual awards and appreciation function. More in this next story. National Union of Government and Federated Workers appreciated their members and staff at their 10th annual award ceremony. Members were awarded for their commitment to service, loyalty and exceptional work ethic. The theme for this year's award ceremony was in difficult economic times, the National Union of Government and Federated Workers continues to be strong. Although we are faced with even more stringent economic challenges, it is important to know that we understand that job security is even more critical in times like these. Ladies and gentlemen, against this background, it is therefore mandatory that workers and the union by extension play a greater role in promoting increased productivity and improved work ethics. It's something that the NUGFW's President General, James Lambert, agrees with. A fair day's work for a fair day's pay. You cannot and you ought not to work one hour for eight hours. You are killing Trinidad and Tobago. You are killing the economy of Trinidad and Tobago. You are killing the children, children, and the future of the country for tomorrow. And that's the grounds of it. Let us put our act together. And Chief Secretary Kelvin Charles noted that labor, government, and the business community must collaborate to enjoy success. And we would have demonstrated that very significantly in respect of what I call the very groundbreaking memorandum of understanding between the Division of Infrastructure, Quarries and the Environment and the Union. And I refer to the MOU that would have resulted in the beginning of the process of transformation of Studley Park Quarries. And what is particularly significant is that no worker lost his or her job. The National Union of Government and Federated Workers is a trade union in Trinidad and Tobago. It was formed on June 3, 1967, out of a merger between the National Union of Government Employees and the Federated Workers Trade Union. I'm Keishon Wilson for Let's Talk Tobago.
Audrey's isn't just about watching nature from a distance. Visitors to the property are fascinated by the fact that Clive uses a dove to help hatch a few of the chicken eggs. Now many residents and visitors look forward to the annual carnival celebrations. If you'll be in Tobago for the big event and don't yet have a costume, don't fear. In true Tobago fashion, there's still room for you in F&J's mass band. Here's more. Carnival 2018 is here, but what's carnival without mass? Mass owners Farisha Spencer and Jason Motley are once again taking part in this year's carnival with the band Rob the Robbers. The concept of this mass band borrows from one of the most beloved traditional carnival characters, the Midnight Robber. This year, they are paying tribute to one of Tobago's prominent mass leaders, Desmond Riley. What we have decided to do with our band is use the contemporary version, which is the spin-off to the traditional mass. So last year we did clongs as the traditional bass, and we did what the clongs would look like. So life as a circus was the, the contemporary part of the traditional of the clongs. So this year we decided to take up the Midnight Rubbers as the project for this year. For F&J Vibes Mass Band, it's not just about having fun. This band also highlights the history of its featured characters. It's also an educational aspect that we try to bring into our band where we have every masqueraders learn about the old, which is the traditional mass, as well as the new, how we can do a spin-off of something that is so precious to us here in Tobago but also make it exciting for the younger folks. If you haven't yet found the band to play with, f &J Vibes Mass Band is affordable. We have a bodysuit sections for the ladies, which is $400. It's an all-inclusive band. And the male, it's $350. But if a female feels that they want to wear T-shirts, it's $350 for them as well. f &J Vibes Band will parade the streets of Scarborough and the Roxborough on Carnival Monday and Tuesday. I'm Crystal George for Let's Talk Tobago. And it's now time to have your say, the segment of our program where we hear what you, the viewers, have to say. Today we're asking, why is it important to volunteer in your community? Now while you think about it, we'll have a look at who had their say this week. So we here with Miss Jordan right now. So we here with Bruce right now. So we here with Brent right now. Let me ask him Mr. Fuller. Let me ask him about Winchester. I can't just walk away. That's very nice. You want to come cover away? We're here for a Have Your Say segment, and today we're asking. Do you think that volunteering is important in our society today? Very, very much important. Volunteering is important, especially in today's society. No, it isn't. It isn't? It isn't. That is a long time. My whole life was a volunteer for different things. And today, there is no, no benefit. You need to pay for everything now. Love how to come back. Today, I give you something, tomorrow I get it back. So I prefer to go back to the old time day. Yes, I think so because there are less fortunate people in most of the communities that we know of and we who are gainfully employed could lend a hand by going and doing volunteer work, whether it's repair their home, fix their yard, do something for them. We have a tradition in Tobago where people were concerned about other people and that is a tradition that is dying out and we have to try to get the young people on board with volunteerism. It's not just about money all the time, you know, sometimes you go back to the community, especially the community you come from, you know what I mean? So, you know, you might have some youths in the community that are a little trouble, you know, and need some advice and need a little guidance, so, you know, you go back to whatever youth organization within our community and you give back something, so it's really important. We close yet another edition of Let's Talk Tobago and as always, we thank you for watching. Please email us with your comments or queries about the program and be sure to visit our website, like our Office of the Chief Secretary Facebook page and subscribe to our YouTube channel. From our house to yours, I'm Davia Chambers along with the Department of Information, Office of the Chief Secretary, Tobago House of Assembly, wishing you a safe and very productive week. We close now with a montage of the Calypso Monarch 2017. Do enjoy.